Well, it's been six years with solar and wind, but is it worth it? Okay, so what we're doing today is we're adding another solar panel because we have a solar powered freezer that we're using and also now a solar powered washing machine. Amongst other duties, this solar array helps charge our batteries for cell phones and laptops. And uh, the wind turbine up there, made by Primus, it also helps keep a trickle charge on our battery bank. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this solar panel over here and uh, we're going to rewire some of these. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is go ahead and measure this. We're going to lift up some of these panels. i got to measure the wiring that I'm going to need. And then I'm going to make some new wiring and then run these two in series. And then these two in series. And then this, these two will run to a circuit breaker. And these two will run to a circuit breaker. And then we will run these to the charge controller. So I've got to do some rewiring to add this new panel. And hopefully that will help out on some of the uh, energy consumption that we're using. So what does it mean when I say something is running in series, like a panel or a battery bank is running in series? Well, what that means is, let's just say you have two panels. Each panel has a positive and negative. So you take a positive and a negative of each panel and you connect those together. Then you have a positive and, re and negative remaining one off of each panel. You take that positive and you take that negative and then you run those down and that becomes your positive and negative for both those panels combined. I hope that makes sense. We have come up in the past with some amazing charts, uh, charts that we've created here on the homestead for viewers just like you. And I'll put these on the screen and you can find these charts at our website at americanhomestead.com. And these wiring charts give you a pretty good indication of how we have our things wired and shows you exactly what wiring something in series and wiring something in parallel looks like uh, by these charts. So if you'd like more information, go to our website at AmericanHomestead.com. You'll find those charts available online. You can download them and look at them and save them on your own computer. So coming down here is where some of the magic happens. And you've got two lines coming in here. So this is two solar panels. And this, this one here is two solar panels. So one set, two sets. The positive and negative running down the positive and negative running down. Okay, remember there's two sets. So let's just take those two first solar panels. Remember up top, we have a positive and negative hooked up to each other. And then the positive and negative, the remaining positive and negative of each solar panel runs down on these two wires. So one's a positive and one's a negative. And then it runs into this breaker box, which we have two fuses. Um, and so these fuses are kind of old. They've been here for years, uh, six years in fact. And so, um, but this is a fuse box. so. Each fuse runs one set of the two solar panels. So this runs two solar panels and this one runs two solar panels. And right now they're both turned on. Uh, we have them functioning and everything is running smoothly. So uh, that's where these two, these two sets of wires come in from the top and then enter in from the bottom right there. And then there's the positive and the positive here runs out and then into this solar uh, charger from Midnight Solar. And it's really dusty right now, sorry about that. I didn't clean everything before the video. And then the negatives from that come into here do not come into the fuses, they come into the negative uh, uh, bus bar right there. It's called a bus bar, and that's where your negatives come from. So there's your negatives, and then everything, the positive and negative, see right there, positive and negative, from there go into the charge controller, and then exit the charge controller from here, and then this goes to um, another fuse box. Uh, actually, you can see the fuse box right there. It goes into the fuse box there before it runs into the battery bank. Okay, now let's take a look and see what we got. Uh, it's kind of a cloudy day. There's not a whole lot of sun out there. I mean, it's, it's partly sunny, mostly cloudy. Um, and so we're only getting about 12 amps, 12, 8 amps. It may jump up. I've seen it jump up to 30 amps when it was sunny, when the clouds cleared. Um, ideally, you should be getting about 1,000 watts, you know, with those solar panels, okay, that are up there. Each one's about a 250-watt solar panel. When it's running at the optimum conditions, exactly uh, those panels parallel to the sun, uh, it should get up to about 1,000 or just close to 1,000 watts. And, you know, about 30 or so amps. Uh, 30 or more amps on here. So now it's just booped up, boosted up to 26, 27, 29. I need to get to 30, get to 30. I guess not. Anyway, 
So right now, it just got sunny outside, and so uh, we're getting a good amount of, you know, we're up about almost 800 uh, watts now. So it's a good bit of sun that's out now. If we can get that up all day, that'd be great. But it's kind of a partly cloudy day, so we may not get all the way up to what they would normally get to. But everything is running right now. We got the, we got the extra panel added, and it is, it's working. You know, so the question then becomes, is solar worth it? And that really depends on you because, you know, this is your adventure. This is, you get to decide how you're going to live your life. You get to decide the things you cannot and can live without. So, you know, when it comes to solar, if you want to do everything, it's going to cost a lot of money to do that. Um, and so then you have to decide, okay, what exactly do you want in your life? You know, what things uh, do you want to be able to have in your home to make your life easier? Because... The advances in modern technology today have all just done that. It's made people's lives easier. Uh, in some respects, I think it's probably damaged their lives, uh, probably worsened them, <laughs> made them lazier, uh, which has made them weaker. But again, this is all about you. You get to decide how you want to live your life and what you want to live without. So, breaking down the numbers. How does it break down? In our area, this is going to be just for us. I'm going to tell you exactly how the numbers break down. Uh, and what we would have had to pay had we gone with electric instead of solar. And then we can just kind of look at the two and understand the savings. So in our area, you cannot get electricity unless you first purchase a septic tank. It's one of the few uh, 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 zoning rules that they have in our county. We have very few zoning, very few rules, you know, laws, ordinances, things like that. But one of the few they have they will not install electric, uh, and it's mostly the electric company who has set this up. They will not install electric in this county unless you have a septic tank. And the reason they do that is because they're worried about so many people coming in, putting up a hunting cabin that they're only going to be at for two weeks at a time, two weeks a year. And then basically they've gone through the trouble because uh, they, they subsidize the installation of that electric. And they want to get a return on their investment. They're investing in you. And so what they're doing is they're going to give you a cheap electric install, um, but they want you to be there to use it. So they're not going to just go out to a hunting cabin, uh, some shack that someone puts up, who's only going to be there for two weeks out of the year, and then um, expect, you know, they're not going to get a return on their investment. So they, the way they go around that and, and to avoid that is to make sure that you have a septic tank install. So in our area, a septic tank install runs about $8,000. So that was what was quoted to us when we first moved down here. We were just we had just gotten on the land. We're playing with the idea. What do we want to do? Do we want to do electric? And you know, we had to we started looking at all of the requirements and we found and discovered quickly that $8,000 was the quoted price for a septic tank install. And we that was just we believe for our homes and our homes are pretty close together. They're, they're separated about 30 feet, 40 feet apart. And so we don't even know, we may have had to get two septic tank installs, one for each house. Uh, I don't, we don't, we never actually went down further down that road to see what the price was going to be. So let's just go ahead. $8,000 for one septic tank install. Hopefully it would have been used for both houses, but that was the beginning of the cost. All right. What was next? We have electric. Now again, electric's cheap. They want to make sure you have that septic in, and so they're going to subsidize the installation of the electric. I think it was going to be around 100 bucks. To, to and we would have to we would have an easement, so we would actually lose property to the electric company to run that pole and line on the property, and so we would we would basically make 100 dollars plus a little bit of a loss of land, which didn't you know make us you know all that happy. So. $8,000 for the septic, $100 for the electric, and then water. To hook up the water, just to hook up to the line down the hill was $800, and then probably another few hundred dollars to run it up to where the houses are. So let's just say an, a, a roundabout number of $1,000 to get hooked up to water, because if you're going to have septic, they want you to have installation of water. Okay, so you can't, <laughs> they're not going to let you do rainwater. If it's going to pass inspection of the, of the septic tank, it's got to have water, so you got to hook up to water. So there's an extra thousand dollars right there. Then let's just, you know, start estimating the monthly cost. We've been here for six years. That's 72 months. Monthly water bill, fifteen dollars. Okay, it's an average in Arkansas, and I think it's probably going to be more than that. You leave a comment below and let me know what you what your average water bill is for the year. I would really like to know that. But according to Google, uh, the average water bill for someone living in Arkansas is around fifteen dollars. So. $15 times two houses times 72 months is going to be $2,160. All 
Okay, so there, add that to the bill. Now, a monthly electric. Now that we have electric, okay, the, if we've got it hooked up. We've got it hooked up. We're the average, according to Google again, the average monthly electric bill for someone living in Arkansas is about $115, $114 or so. Okay, I think that's really low. Again, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think your average um, electric bill is for the year. I would love to know that. But I'm going to go ahead and say 150 bucks. Okay, so that's going to be my average because I, I think that's more in line with what is is reality. So 150 dollars times two because two houses, 70 times 72 months is 21,600 dollars. 21,600 dollars. You add it all up, and if we were to get hooked up, to, if we had gotten hooked up to electric at the time that we had moved here, and then you add it all the way up to the time we're at now, we're looking at a total of $32,860. That's what we have paid. If we had gotten the electric install all the way up until now, $32,860 and change. Okay. Now, we're not done yet. <laughs> if you had electric, what are the chances that you would have gone ahead somewhere along that 72 months and probably have installed air conditioning. I mean, a real air conditioning unit that a real, not, I'm not talking about some window unit, some cheap unit. No, I'm talking about an actual air conditioning unit that would supply air conditioning to a home. For two homes, we're looking at about $5,000, an additional $5,000. Now, you don't have to have air conditioning, so we can leave that number out if you want to. But most people, if you have the ability to get electric, chances are you're going to go ahead and opt in for the air conditioning. We don't have air conditioning. So that's an additional $5,000 saved. But still, without the air conditioning, we're talking about $32,860. What did it cost for our solar? Well, I talked to Tim the other day about this and he has estimated it based on his numbers because he is the bean counter of the homestead. He keeps track of all this. And so my father-in-law, Tim, estimated that uh, probably his unit uh, that he has for his system that he has for his home is probably roughly around forty four hundred dollars and then the system for my home is probably around thirty six hundred dollars something like that so probably around seven or eight thousand dollars let's just round it up to say you know with adding tools and wiring and maybe some other ins and outs um, around eight thousand dollars you you can even you can uh, you yeah let's just say eight thousand dollars maybe even nine thousand dollars so nine thousand dollars for a solar setup that basically runs enough electricity to charge our laptops, charge our cell phones, run a solar powered freezer, which freezes ice that we can then put into coolers like these uh, Drift Sun ice chests. They're like the Yeti knockoffs. They're really good coolers, but they're like half the price or even less than that. And so we have a refrigerator because we, our solar powered freezer freezes the ice and then we stick the ice blocks every other day in here so we have a refrigerator and we have a solar powered washing machine that's all powered by solar so we can wash clothes we can have a freezer we have a refrigerator and it only cost us about eight thousand dollars we don't have ac though again this is your adventure you get to decide what's of value to you so you don't have to live without air conditioning but we have lived without it for six years and we have a savings that's well over twenty thousand dollars well over $20,000 in six years. So is solar worth it? No one can answer that question but you. What are you willing to not let go of? What are you willing to let go of? How do you want to live your life? That's up to you. You have to decide that. But in six years, it's been six years now we've had the solar. And we refused or we opted out to go, opted to go out without the electricity. And it's a savings of at least probably $22,000, $23,000 or more. I think that's substantial that we've saved that much money. Doing it our own way. How will you do it? That's kind of up to you. I, leave your comments below. I'd love to know. Uh, but people always ask, you know, what's the breakdown? You know, what's the savings? Is solar power worth it? Um, you know, again, that's up to you. You have to decide that. Leave a comment below. I'd really be interested in reading them. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't, subscribe. If you haven't, hit that like button, and I'll see you next time on an American Homestead. Hey, hey there. Thanks for watching our channel. If you're looking for great off-grid homesteading videos, 
this is the channel for you. Hit that subscribe button and be sure to like the video you just watched. You can also feel free to send us your questions by going to anamericanhomestead.com on our contact page and send me your question. Your question might get made into a video. In the meantime, check out some of these other great videos. Oh wait, go ahead and click them. Go ahead.